There was once a girl named Mary. She lived in a small cottage with her mother, her father, and several brothers and sisters. Mary was the oldest in the family, and she helped looking after her younger siblings. She helped her mother with the cooking, and she helped with the family work. They raised sheep, they sheared the fleece, carded the fleece, and then the spinning began. And when the fleece had been turned into yarn, they began the creative task of weaving and knitting. Mary was especially good with the knitting. She was fast and she was skillful and she could knit almost anything. And all of this work Mary did with a smile on her face and a song in her heart. One day, Mary's mother said that she needed to go up to the hillside to check on the lambs. And Mary said, oh, mother, I'll go instead of you. you. You must be so tired. You were up half the night with the baby. I'll check on the lambs. Oh, but Mary said her mother, you're almost finished with that sock that you're knitting. Oh, mother, you know that I can knit and walk at the same time. That you can, said her mother. Well, you're a good girl, Mary. I'm very grateful. And Mary took a large ball of yarn in a bag and her knitting needles and the sock that was almost finished, and she set out up the hill to check on the lambs. Now, Mary's mother had said that she was a good girl, but Mary's mother wasn't the only one who recognized that. For often, Mary was observed by the little folk, the fairies, and they admired her hard work and her kindness and her cheerful nature. And as they observed Mary walking up the hill to check on the lambs, they looked at each other and they said, she is a very good girl. We should give her a reward. They all nodded in agreement. Well, Mary continued walking with her knitting needles clicking. Finally, she got to the pasture where the lambs were grazing. They were fine. And so she turned around, still knitting, and began to walk down the hill. But Suddenly, she found herself in a clearing that she didn't remember, and she saw something extraordinary in the middle of the clearing. It was something that was sparkling and gleaming. It was a chair, and it looked like it was made of pure gold. Well, Mary looked at that chair, and it occurred to her that this was a gift from the fairies. She ran up to the chair and sat down, and suddenly her head was full full of stories, stories of all the people and all the creatures who had lived on that land for hundreds and thousands of years, stories of peasants and farmers and kings and queens and knights and princesses and dragons and wolves and bears. Mary was excited about the stories. Now she knew, or at least she'd heard, that if the fairies give you a gift, you must claim it right away. Otherwise, it could disappear. So she wanted to take that chair home. And she reached down and tried to lift it, but it was so heavy. She couldn't lift the chair alone, and she knew she would need help. So she decided to go home and, and ask her parents and siblings to help her get that chair home. But she suddenly remembered that she had not been in that clearing before. How would she find it again, and how would she find the chair again? She had an idea. She took the ball of yarn from her bag and she tied the end of the yarn around the arm of the chair. And then she walked down the hill with the yarn trailing behind her. When she reached home, all she'd have to do is just follow the yarn back up the hill and there she'd find the chair. Well, she walked down the hill, but ooh, sadly, the yarn from that ball of yarn, it ran out before she was at her home what to do? Ah, the sock. She was almost finished knitting the sock, but well, she could always knit it again. So she took the end of the yarn from that sock and tied it to the end of the yarn from the ball of yarn. And she continued walking down the hill, unraveling the sock as she went. But the yarn from the sock, it ended just before she reached her cottage. She could see it. And so she began to call out for her family, come help me. But they didn't hear her. 
what to do now? Well, she took that that yarn, the end of the yarn, and she put it on the ground, and then she took a large rock and placed it on the end of the yarn so that it wouldn't blow away. And then she ran on home. She told her parents and her brothers and sisters what gift she'd been given, and she said, you've got to help me, help me get this chair home. So they ran out, and Mary took them to where she'd left the end of the yarn underneath the rock, but the rock was gone, and so was the yarn. She wasn't willing to give up though, and so she led them up the hill and they looked up and down that hill, but they never found the clearing and they never found the chair. And it was getting dark, so they returned home. Mary was heartbroken and wept all the way home. When she got home, her mother said, oh Mary, I'm so sorry. Just sit down by the fire and I will make you a nice cup of tea. So Mary sat down on the rough wooden stool by the fire, and suddenly, amazingly, her head was filled with stories. All the stories of the people and the creatures who had belonged to that land for hundreds and thousands of years. All of the peasants and farmers and knights and princesses and kings and queens and dragons and bears and wolves. All of the stories were there. And Mary smiled, for she realized two things. First, that the fairy's gift had not been the golden chair, but it had been the stories. And second, she realized that if your head is full of stories, any chair at all could be a magic golden storytelling chair. Well, the golden chair is probably still there on the hillside somewhere. People have looked and looked, but no one has ever found it. But as for Mary, well, she told those stories that she'd, she'd had in her head, that it filled up her head when she sat down in that chair. She told the stories to her brothers and sisters, to her mother and father, to her aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents. And then she began telling stories in the town and other people heard about Mary's storytelling, and so they asked her to come to their towns. And after a while, she was going to many towns and many villages, and she was asked to tell stories at schools and libraries and festivals and theaters. And was she rich? Well, no, not exactly rich, but she did all right. And so she realized that the gift from the fairies had been the gift of stories, stories for a storyteller. And in that way, you might say that those stories were as good as gold.